Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE 12933 here, and in today's CCNA 3-Minute Tutorial, I'm going to give you a little real-world advice about the Cisco router boot process and some other things like this you run into in your studies, and then we're going to discuss exactly what happens when a Cisco router or switch boots, and we'll see a little bit of this live on live Cisco equipment as well. That real-world bit of advice I wanted to give you, and I've been there, believe me, I know what it's like. When you're studying things like this that require a little memorization and there's, you know, what order are these steps in, that kind of thing, it's impossible not to think, you know, is this really important? Do I really need to know this for real world networking or do I just need to know it to pass the exam? Well, while I can practically guarantee you that the information we talk about here in the next three minutes uh, is going to be on your CCNA exam in one form or another, you need to know this for the real world as well. This knowledge has come in handy for me over the years, and it will for you as well. Because unfortunately, things don't always go right with Cisco routers. And one of the things that the router does when it first powers up it's going to perform a series of self-diagnostics. It's called the power on self-test, and there's more than one, so we're looking at our posts. And basically what's happening there is the router is looking around very generally in, in itself and saying, is there a condition so terrible, so catastrophic, that it's not even worth my time to boot up? You know, is, is there a memory corruption issue that will stop me from operating correctly? Uh, is there an environmental variable, which is a fancy way of saying, is there a problem like with the fans? You know, are the fans working? Because let's face it, if the fan is broken, there's no real reason for the router to continue booting up, right? Because it would overheat very quickly. So that's what the power on self-test is all about. Now, hopefully our router will pass the post and the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to look for a source from which to load a valid iOS image. Now the router has three sources from which it can load an iOS and this is the default order and this can be changed around you'll learn how to do that in later studies via the config register but the first place it looks for that iOS is flash that's the default. It can also find it on a TFTP server, Trivial File Transfer Protocol, or in ROM, our read-only memory. Very important to know that order. So once that iOS image is found, now the router is going to look for a valid startup config file. Now by default, the router will first look in non-volatile RAM, NVRAM. And remember, that's our RAM that doesn't lose its contents on a reload. Now, if there is no startup file there, the router will look for a TFTP server, and that's something you and I as network admins would actually have to go to the router and config and say, here's the TFTP server, here's where to get the, uh, the router startup config file. But what happens if there isn't a startup config file? What's the router supposed to do? Well, the router is going to ask you what to do because the router will prompt you to enter setup mode. And that's where the router runs what we call the system config dialog. It's a series of questions involving basic router setup. Some people really like configuring the router this way. I don't particularly care for it. But here's what it's going to look like. It is prompting you at this point to go into setup mode. And you can't just hit enter because we've got two choices in the brackets. We've either got to say, yes, I do or no, I don't. And in this case, I'll go ahead and say no, I don't. And it'll press return to get started. It's going to have to do a little bit of loading here. But what will happen when you say no there eventually, once all that loads and the messages go by, is that you'll see that you're put right at the router prompt and nothing has been configured on this router. We're not going to go through every step of setup mode and everything about it in this video. Please look for another video on my YouTube channel that does deal with setup mode. That's important information as well. But that is basically what happens when you boot a Cisco router or switch. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel for plenty of additional Cisco training videos. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE 12933.